Hey, welcome back everyone. This is Rob the Scholar, and I am here with Nate the Fool. Yeah, he is. And uh, this is Bitch I Ain't Scared. Uh, let's get right to it. I um, sent you, or I sent you a text to check mm-hmm. out a trailer today. And uh, so I had seen the poster for this movie called Hereditary around just through like posts and stuff. And then I finally just decided to watch it. I had no clue who was in it, what it's about, what to expect. It's uh, it's eight twenty four. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's eight twenty four, and I was blown away. I just couldn't believe a lot of the images that I was seeing. And aside from what the movie is about. Like, the trailer was just well done. The music and everything. So I'm hoping the same tone comes into play when this movie arrives. But I'm super excited. What do you think of this trailer here? I actually watched it. Yeah. But, you know, I figured if you were telling me to watch it, then it must not be too revealing. And really, it's like, I don't know what the fuck it's about. Yeah. But, you know, I got some good stuff from it. And it looks like... Your birthday came early. I know, right? So I have shared my vast interest or just just observation that Tony Collette has been kicking it in the horror genre lately. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she, you know, did Krampus and, you know, Sixth Sense. I don't know. Did she do another and one? She did after? the remake of Fright Night. That's right. She was in Fright Night. And mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, like, keep it up. Yeah. I want to see more of her because she continues to pick these roles in this genre that puts her not necessarily in the center but she's got more to say than just some mom in the background Mm -hmm. while the you know the main star the you know the movie deals with whatever's going on um this looks very supernatural ish or whatever and you know from the uh images it looks like like i said it's just going to be a really cool film this is something that i wanted to point out to you though do you know who directed this no, I didn't see that. Okay, so the director and writer is Ari Aster. Do you recognize that name? No. So <laughs> I, I don't know that name either. So I looked him up. Apparently, he is also the writer and director of that short, The Strange Things About the Johnsons. Do you remember that short? No. It was it was the creepiest thing ever. So I'll have to look it up. Yeah, it was, it was this black family a father you know mother and son and this it looked like sort of like this after well not after school special but it was just like this whole like wholesome father son moment father walks in on the son like masturbating oops and the dad is like no don't worry don't feel embarrassed it's all natural yada yada and you think oh how sweet father leaves the room you find out that the son was masturbating to his father you don't know this because no. at this point you should know what I'm no, talking about. I You've told never, you I've never you seen never, this. Okay, well, like if you watch the whole thing, it is super creepy. It's so over the top and out there. So now that I know who directed this, I can just imagine what this family is going to go through throughout this movie. Because now he has a budget, <laughs> right? Yeah, but I'm I'm actually pretty excited. I really like this mm. trailer. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited. Um, the one of the taglines from the trailer is the demons that uh, your parents leave behind for you or something like that. I thought that was interesting because that's something that we can all relate to. Things that have been passed down from our parents, whether it be like straight up hereditary or something that we've just learned along the way. So I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. I think A24 puts out some good stuff. Yes. So, Yeah. Good yeah, one. I'm really. Now, did they also do the Quiet Place? Ooh. I can't. I know. I shouldn't have asked that know. unless I like looked. I know it up, that but they yeah. participated in Moonlight. That's okay. That's, well, I that's mean, yeah. what I, I mean, know them for. And you know, they've done. I think they did the the Killing of a Sacred Deer, which was super creepy. I think too. they did. I haven't seen it. But oh, yeah. super creepy yeah. movie. So I mean, yeah, they know how to pick them. All right, Nate, you got some for us? Um, just one quick thing because we did not say it and we've said it before but last week when we were talking about music and composers mm-hmm. and all that jazz um i did not mention stranger things okay and that's some music that you know i think we can all get behind <laughs> so i just wanted to rectify that moment are you saying like 
their instrumental like score choices I'm talking or just about the their soundtrack oh just the opening okay yeah i mean okay. the other music is cool but it's yeah. like basically tied to the beginning but uh-huh. yes i think that that's noteworthy music it's new it's gets you in the mood so definitely just no, wanted I... to you know wanted to say that okay all right so before we get into the main topic of our episode um let's talk some black mirror mm. We are on episode three now. Um, according to Netflix, it is the episode Crocodile. Yep. And um, it is written by Charlie Brooker uh, and uh, directed by John Hillcote, starring Andrea Rice, Riseboro, uh, Kenrin Sonia Sawar, and Andrew Gower. All right. So, I didn't read the synopsis for this. I chose to just watch it straight up because the title was so ambiguous. I was just like, let me just watch it, see what they do. Right? Like, the first two, even by the posters, you kind of have an understanding of what it is that you might get into. But this one seemed very, like, mysterious. So, I was like, let me just watch it all the way through. Yeah. Um, I like this one. But I think so far it's the weakest out of the three. Really? However, this episode was super impactful on like how far somebody will go in keeping a secret. Mm-hmm. And so hopefully you guys watch this before tuning in. But just in case you don't care and you are curious what it's about, a woman interviews various people using a device that allows her to access their memory. So each episode always features some new technology that is somewhat being hinted at being developed now, but now is taken, you know, a step up in the game and used through everyday life. Now, that doesn't even tell you what this story is about. And again, that's why this episode is just super creepy. Mm-hmm. But, um... This woman and this guy, they are, you know, partying all night and they, um, you know, are on drugs, are probably drunk, yada, yada. They're driving home. This takes, like, this takes place in, what, Iceland, I think? I, I don't know. I yeah, mean, I it, think it looks I, like it's somewhere. Like yeah. A, so they're, they're, they're still on their all way. British. Yeah. <laughs> or Irish, yeah. And uh, they pull a, I know what you did last summer, and hit someone who looked like a child. First of all, did That's you? What I thought at first. Yeah, I thought it was a child, and um, of course, I mean, apparently it was it was a man. But they obviously are high as fuck. You know, they're not really thinking straight. They're you know in shock, and they decide to not only not call the cops but they get rid of the body like it's their secret to take with them to the grave because they know they're just going to get fried for it not literally but i mean they don't want to go to jail so then you cut 15 minutes or 15 minutes (laughs) 15 years later and the story just focuses on the woman who was not driving she actually wanted to call the cops and it was the guy who was like no we need to hide this and she you know, came off with a really good life. She's got a husband, a nice job, a son, you know, living the life. Uh, so what do you what do you think about this episode? Um, I just finished it before you got here. Oh, okay. <laughs> and honestly, I'm like, I'm really depressed now. <laughs> did I, you I, did I you forget to watch it or Um, yeah, I mean I just was like, Oh, I, I forgot to watch it. Let me let me hurry up and watch it. Um yeah. I almost sent you a text and just in case well, I meant to like, watch it yesterday but that's yeah. neither here nor there mm-hmm. so yeah it was a huge downer I, I definitely felt sorry for her in the beginning because you know she was like oh my god we have to call the police She, even though she was high she did want to do the right thing and she was resistant she's like no we're not going to do this but she still did it she still went along with dumping the body yeah um but yeah, she did move on with her life. Fifteen years later, um, at first I was like, "Man, the nerve to now feel bad." You want to feel bad now, sir? Get the fuck out of my face. Yeah. Um, because she did. She moved on. She was married. She was cleaned up. He had only recently just stopped drinking. So, 
you know, I felt like that was a little unfair for Those you 12 to... Those 12 steps are super strong. Like they they really get to you. When you want to make amends for your past sins, and they literally will have you go back to birth. Like if you came out of your mom like all like pissed and painful and all like... They'll make you do that. How do you know this, Rob? <laughs> We're not going to get into that. So, you know, it definitely was shitty because he was like calling all the shots like nope we're gonna dump the body and now you know what i'm ready to confess my sins and i'm ready to just take the consequences for these actions but i will say it was very nice of him to go to her before doing this i don't know why he thought she was gonna agree to this and like go together holding hands walking into the police station but like yeah of course she's gonna have reservations especially after so long yeah so, um, I think the technology aspect was interesting. It's always interesting. Mm-hmm. It was somewhat reminiscent of the other technology we've seen with San Junipero and USS Callister. Yeah, uh, but the it was history different. of you. Because it was the- like a little like ooh, a needle thing. Oh, I know. Not great. Not I didn't great. And everyone that. was just like, bloop. Yeah, it's fine. What? D- didn't yeah. that hurt? Yeah, so this is what was interesting about that technology, too, because it really had nothing to do with her at all. Mm. You know, like, the when I read the synopsis earlier, it was speaking about a different woman. She has a job where she deals with insurance claims. Mm-hmm. And this guy was hit by the best invention in the world. I know. I mean, what the hell? I pray somebody thinks to do that in the future. Just don't hit anybody. I know, just don't hit anybody. But yeah, um, she had to make sure everything was up to par and and that this guy was telling the truth Mm -hmm. about his claim that this automated pizza delivery truck hit him in the middle of the street. And she needed witnesses, but the technology, what it does is that you can go into their minds and and literally go back and visualize the memories leading up to whatever moment needs to be tracked. And with those memories comes witnesses. You look around and you see people who were around and you notice like, hey, maybe they saw something. And so it was her job to find everyone. Now, that is some technology you use at you know at the fbi and like the cops or whatever but what do you think about invasion of privacy like it's funny how that has because she was just like it's the law like i've got to do it otherwise i'll come back here with the cop you know i was like that Mm -hmm. is such like we've already passed the part of privacy like if i we suspect you of anything we got to go in your mind and it's not just word of mouth anymore yeah i don't know i wonder if she was not being truthful at oh. that point where she was like just I gotta get in here cause I gotta well, get that bonus well she had to drive like how long right. to her she's place like, she's like I'm not going back <laughs> like, it's the law but then I think like she had told the, the dentist when she was interviewing him she's like unless you are hurting yourself or someone else I don't care what you were doing but so I think it wasn't like anyone had to or I don't know maybe they maybe they did maybe it really was like no it's the law if you tell me that you've seen something and now you're all like I don't want you to to look at my mind yeah who knows this is set in the future where I'm sure they would they would adapt some laws like that it's yeah. not too far fetched because they're trying to like you know be all in our business now with Facebook and shit <laughs> Facebook stop listening to me I don't <laughs> God, anytime I mention one little thing oh you want to shop for new shoes like, no not right now yeah it's it's, it's a little creepy mm-hmm. but uh, yeah I think, uh, I, I like I said, I felt bad for her in the beginning, but then she was so desperate to keep this secret. I can understand. Her life was so much better now. Um, but wow, she went to some really heavy lengths. Yeah. And, uh, oh, man, I just... So leading up to this episode, I, I would sometimes pass, like, a BuzzFeed quiz or just some kind of, like... Um, rating system but I didn't read anything about the episode I just wanted to see but the consistency was that this woman was like evil incarnate like she was the worst human being ever and I was like what is she going to do and you know like the killing spree was just I mean damn it just it sucks but I mean the length she went to 
you know protect her life and her family do you think it was all superficial or was was she really thinking about her family like i don't want to leave them or you know like Mm. was she thinking about her son or was she like i just don't want to go to jail or i don't want to get caught sure she was thinking about her life and her kid but i think i mean if she was poor or something like would she give a shit <laughs> i think ultimately it was it comes down to her wanting to protect her own interest mhm not i mean and that's like a lot of people would be in the same boat whether you have a husband wife kids a great job or anything it's like i viscerally i do not want to go to prison this was 15 years ago i have tried my best to move on so I don't want to get this hit now. That's not fair, technically. Yeah. And I was sitting there too. I was like, it was your fucking idea. Like, why are we talking about this? Yeah. Like, I, I, I hated the fact that I was like trying to convince them not to do it, you know? But I mean, for the sake of watching something, it's like, you've already gone through it. Why mm-hmm. are we doing this? It just kind of sucked. No, I didn't hate it. I just, I mean, the first time. <laughs> I mean, it was like, by, well, she, she killed him. Which I was like, this is like weird. What's happening? What? And I was like, I just, I didn't think that she would be able to kill him. Obviously, he hit his head, so whatever. But that whole thing of like, damn, she killed him and she covered it up and, you know, got away with it, sort of. But I didn't feel bad in that respect. Yeah. Um, but then once she just starts killing like everybody who can like expose her, man, that was cr- so. Remind me, did the did the features of the technology come about in the episode before she did that initial kill? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, I mean, so, so well, we found out about- we saw her like at home. Um, the insurance yeah. woman, uh, she like turned it on like you saw it at her computer and she like propped it up and turned it on okay but i don't think you knew what it did yet we didn't know what it did yet okay so i think when we discovered what the machine did i was like oh they're gonna see that she was a witness and it's just gonna track all the way back to her Mm. and i was like god damn it black mirror you you sly one well and also with that i felt like oh okay well i know where this is going Mm because Um, I mean, at first, I didn't know. I didn't read the synopsis. I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. I, I was just going along. Mm-hmm. And but then once they introduced that aspect, I'm like, oh, okay. So now she's going to. It's going to come down to her because she actually saw the accident. She looked out the window and she saw the guy get hit by the pizza. It's a pizza delivery thing, by the way, people. Yeah. So if that comes about in the next like five years, man, I'm going to be fat. I know. But yeah. Um, so I mean, I, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. Eventually, we're we're gonna get to her, and it's gonna be yeah. this moment where she reviews everything. And I mean, there was this small moment where I thought, oh, she, for some reason, she's just not gonna see it. She's not going to see what happened, mm-hmm. and she's just gonna get away with it. Yeah, that's what I thought would happen. Okay, I really thought it was gonna be this moment where she's like so terrified that that this interview is going to reveal all of her deepest, darkest secrets. But then it's like, nope. Oh, you saw me get hit by the thing. Great. Got it. Thanks for your time. I really thought that's what was going to happen. Yeah. Well, guess not. I know. So can you, isn't it funny how fate works where just this chain reaction of like, oh, I see you. Oh, I've done this. So then your head turns this way and you notice this. And I'm like, she's in front of the window. So I was like, I know somebody's going to see her. So that was already like established, but it was just the the chain of events and, and things like the flash. Let me review the flash and then let's see why he was taking photos and then let's mm-hmm. go here. And it's just like, I can't believe it was not necessarily easy, but it, I mean, just technology in general, like that's how easy it is to like. And, and that's the other thing you just like, you just never can get away with anything. It's good detective work though. It sure is. And um, so let's talk about the twist or i guess the ending of how it like <clears throat> resolved oh i kind of <clears throat> felt me. like that didn't make sense to me okay um, because so when the insurance claim agent was interviewing people there was like a beer pub nearby so it smelled very like hoppy i guess i don't know, it smelled like beer so she kept opening a bottle of the beer and being like here just sniff this it'll help you know help you recall your memories and that was effective for people So, you know, after she's killed everyone, including a baby, 
Yeah. Who we find out couldn't even see. That fucking sucked. Well, yeah, that was one thing. I was like, hopefully she leaves and I... I was hoping that she wouldn't notice the baby. That's the thing. It's like, so the baby cries and I'm like, yeah, she's going to feel real shitty after she finds out they have a kid. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, so she's going to hear this and then she's just going to leave, right? Because I'm like, okay, she'll have her moment and then she'll just take off because she left the baby orphan and then the camera, you know, cuts over and the door's fucking open. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. The baby saw her her and i was just like god damn it and the baby did not see her yeah that was the baby was blind so crazy so this twist of i mean i'm glad that i'm glad that she got caught mm. after all it was like jesus um mm, they reviewed memories from a guinea pig i i don't know how that worked i okay. mean can you communicate with the guinea pig and be like, what did you see in the last hour or so? Here, smell this, do this. I mean, I, I don't, I kind of call bullshit on that. Okay, I okay. I don't know if I can I, accept that. I actually found it to be fucking brilliant. So here's the thing. I'm watching it with um, Rigo, right? Mm-hmm. And when she drives up to the house in the insurance woman's car, she drives up to the house and I was like, okay, this is a brilliant plan. Like, Take the car up there, figure out a way to get home, but you need to take the car back. Totally get it. She's approaching the house, and then she walks in, father's in the bathtub. I immediately started laughing my ass off, and I turned to Riga. I was like, Riga, I already know. I was like, do you want to know? He goes, no, don't say anything. I was like, I'm going to text you then. Don't look at your phone. And I text him. I was like, the guinea pig's going to witness everything, and that's how she gets caught. And so, by the way, oh my God, like... The father taking that hammer to the head. Like, here's the thing about death scenes like that. Because I don't know exactly what happens when you get, like, trauma to the head. But every time I see something similar to that type of death, it's not, like, super 80s over the top. Like, oh, my God, they're going, you know, blood spewing out. It's like you get a, a few leaks, and it really depends how hard you hit, but like your brain literally just malfunctions and he just didn't even know what to do. Like that to me yeah. was so freaky to look at. And just the image of her standing over him with the mask on, like that's the last thing you see. It's terrible. Terrible. But I so called it. And I just started laughing because um, it made me think of... Um, so the Ricky Gervais show, right? He had a podcast and it had this guy, Carl. So he would tell the most outlandish stories in the world and he would read about them. But the way that he tells stories, it just sounds like gibberish. One of his stories was that they solved a crime that happened in some kind of like office. And the way that they did it is that they lined up all of the employees at the at the job and they interviewed them. But there was like this house plant that was like right next to them and they had like wires connect to it or something and it would react once the killer was around and that's how they caught him. If the story is true or not, it was a story that I just remembered and so that's why I just was like, oh, I bet you the guinea pig is going to be the witness of it all and that's how they were going to catch her. And so I just thought that was kind of funny. To touch on your shenanigans claim, I mean, I'm not the study of animals, so I'm, I mean, I think it's possible. Sure, it's possible. And, you know, obviously they didn't use the whole beer thing because he wasn't at that location. No, I'm not saying that they didn't use beer. It had nothing to do with the insurance claim, but this whole time it's been like humans, and then it's like a guinea pig? Yeah. Well, I mean, if anything, they had to do, you know, animal trials before humans. So I'm, I'm sure they knew that they can get something out of it and it didn't hurt to try. But I mean, for the sake of the episode, I guess it made sense to just do it that way. But I, I thought that was kind of clever. I mean, obviously I saw it coming, but it didn't take away from, I guess, the entertainment value of the episode. So, I mean, yeah, I thought it was all right. Um what was it? Oh, did you like the technology? I think you may have answered this earlier. Um, just yeah, kind of. I mean, it was cool. To, it was interesting. Yeah. I liked that it wasn't um, perfect. Mm-hmm. It was. 
Um, and, I, you know, I thought, I had this thought that, oh, well, at the end, since the police were there yeah. to, and they said, all right, let's get out of the way and let the recallers do their job. Yeah. Uh, I wondered, was their technology better because they were police? But then I thought, no, because it's all government jobs. Like, the insurance is it's like a government agency. Yeah. So I'm sure it's like the same type of technology. But it's like, that. that made me think was it better and that's why oh we can hook it up to this guinea pig and we can see exactly what it saw we don't yeah. need it to be able to communicate with us we'll just yeah. rewind and, and see what happened mm-hmm. but uh, yeah I liked that it wasn't a clear cut sure thing I liked the moment where the dentist was like she was wearing a lime green coat she said it was yellow actually and then it like changed mm-hmm. in his mind because yeah. like oh and she's like you know it's subjective I mean things change so that, that was interesting yeah um, the music, like they used the music to recall memories. I thought mm-hmm. it was really, it was cool. All these yeah. different sensory things to help us uh, recall our memories. But yeah, yeah, it was interesting. And so, how would you rate this? Hmm, I'm not sure, honestly. Uh, I mean, I would say a four, but I kind of feel like it was a three and a half just because it pissed me off. Okay. You know, I mean, and it doesn't matter that it depressed me. Like I'm heavily depressed now. Um, I really am. <laughs> it was it was a really traumatic like. Like I really horrible... wanted her to let that woman go. Yeah, and I mean, and just the simple fact of like this is what we've been reduced to, and mm-hmm. you know, it's just not to say it was super easy for her to do these things. No, but I think I it mean, was very hard. Yeah, like when people saying like evil incarnate. I mean. Ooh, I'm on the fence. She she did some really horrible things. Mm-hmm. And once she killed that baby, I was like, oh, okay. But this is kind of where the title of the episode kind of comes in, too. Because I was going to ask you. Yeah. Okay, so for me, this is... So the, my first instinct was... Oh, go ahead. What do you... No, go ahead. I, I just thought it. of, like, crocodile tears. There you go. That's exactly. So that was my first reaction was, like, crocodile tears. And not to say that she was completely insincere about it. But it's like, but, come on. You're yeah, doing all this after, shit. Stop crying. But stop crying, bitch. The the other theory is is that you know just the crocodile itself with its hard exterior and you know its very raw sort of animal instinct attack, you know it kind of plays off hmm. as like a log where you know you I'm not in da- you know I'm not a danger to anyone and then bam it just snaps at you. She kind of came off that way because you look at her and there's nothing really you know dangerous looking about her you don't really see that she's a possible killer i mean she already yeah yeah i mean she goes to her son's recital nobody around her knows that she just killed two people and a baby like that no three people and a baby mm-hmm. like you don't see that and then so that kind of where the title kind of comes in too yeah i'm about to say something and you know yeah. i don't want you to like laugh or think i'm ridiculous because I, I always like come up with these social commentary things but i think there's definitely like a component whether they wanted us to see this or not yeah you know because when we met her she had long red hair and she was carefree and okay. on drugs and living life okay and then the next time we see her her hair is very short mm-hmm. and icy blonde and you know so she's more mature yeah but the fact that this man made these decisions and basically forced her to go along it's like she did not voice how she really felt. She didn't do what she wanted to do. She went along with what he wanted. Yeah. And then years later, he comes back and is like, guess what, bitch? I'm going to do it again. You got to do what I say. And that made her snap. Okay. So for me, it definitely makes me think of patriarchy. Okay. Because white male patriarchy is imposed upon white women. Yeah. Even though they're supposed to be equal Mm -hmm. in the supremacy they're not okay but they're expected to go along with everything yeah and then that's sort of like this chain reaction of them lashing out at everyone else Mm -hmm. so she was like fuck this white man and fuck all these brown people including their babies yeah (laughs) so i'm not being funny yeah i'm being serious this was like something that i really felt watching i was like damn that's Mm -hmm. some deep ass shit yeah and you know what? They actually ended it where it's like, I mean, yeah, the police were there and they were pointing in her direction. That's how they ended it. Yeah. So maybe maybe she fucking got away with it. <laughs> maybe the guinea pig didn't work after all. I don't know. Yeah. Open ended. But what would you say, Rob? What would you give? I'm it? I'm giving this a three. Um mm, one of the reasons why it got 
a lower grade is because and this is not a bad thing look the episode was very entertaining i liked it um but what i look forward into watching black mirror is i want to see the technology Hmm. drive these people crazy and not not in the literal sense but like i wanted to have more of a heavier impact into the behavior of its characters now the episode sort of played out in a way to where you didn't really need the technology i mean it could have just had witnesses or a clue or maybe she walked in and saw a murder weapon or something suspicious and she got scared and left the technology really didn't have a huge influence over the characters and i mean i get i understand the impact upon privacy but that's not what the episode was about and i feel that the technology was sort of second fiddle to the actual story which is a woman just trying to get away with murder and so that's why I gave it a little grade. I just think it kind of fell off what the show has been doing up till now. And, um, yeah. So, that that's why I'm giving it just a little... And, again, I... I mean, yeah, it was an interesting twist, but like you said, it's it's very open-ended. You know, we just kind of have to believe this is what can happen. We can take memories from a guinea pig, and, you know, we don't know what really happened with her, and all this stuff. So... Yeah, so I I give it a three. Okay, I can see that. Mm -hmm. Also, side note, yeah, whoever the actor is that was playing the uh, hotel concierge, he was cute. He was a cutie patootie. Now, I wish that I could remember the scene very well because he was so like, this is my job, we have rules, I can't give you that info, but yet I'm going to judge you and be like, yeah, let's talk about this white girl for a second. She was watching some dirty shit. And I was like, okay, you can give that info out but you can't talk about like yeah. who she is and like where- i mean i well he i don't know he's still you know it's like that human thing i guess people want to gossip mm-hmm. he was like oh. but but judge i did have much, this judgy story. much like, i didn't even yeah, think it was that porn, big a deal it's like yeah she watched porn but it's like it wasn't like she was watching i don't know donkey porn or something <laughs> she was it was like it looked like basic ass no porn. trust me he was on my mind like when that episode ended so he was in a movie i boy which was a netflix original remember when that guy got like technology powers when a cell phone piece entered his brain you don't remember that i never ha- saw it oh okay yeah his name is armin karima look at him oh yeah uh yeah. yes <laughs> Yeah. He is a gorgeous man. Hello, sir. <laughs> um, he's also in Tyrant. I heard that show was actually pretty good. Oh, I saw the first season and never watched it again. <laughs> it was a, it was a good show, but yeah. for some reason just fell off. Okay. Oh, well. All right. So what is... Oh, yes. I've been waiting for this one. So next is Hang the DJ. This is the Love App one. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Did you watch that one already? No. Okay. Okay. So remember, guys, next week we're going to cover episode four, Hang the DJ. has something to do with a dating app and an expiration date for how long you guys are supposed to be together or something like that. So we'll see how this one, maybe it'll be a little less, you know, you know, horror-ish or, you know, I don't know. Maybe this is one of those, like, I guess just comedy ones maybe i don't know we'll Mm. see but i've been looking forward to this one i think i've heard a lot of people say that they enjoyed this so okay let's find out all right so just make sure to watch that before tuning in next week and um okay good all right so nate is gonna take left chair on this one am i yes (laughs) but i'm to the right i know (laughs) so let's just be honest so i thought it would be fun to talk about reimaginings and it's not necessarily limited to fairy tales although that is very popular Mm -hmm. taking something that's sweet and whimsical and then making it or actually not even making it dark but (laughs) returning it to its dark roots because most fairy tales um are kind of sad and demented so last week i had mentioned that there in pre 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 production of a Wizard of Oz horror film. Looking forward to that. Hope it happens. But this is not the first time that this has happened. We've seen other incarnations of this. I'll just throw out an example. Yeah. 
Um, it was like a straight to video thing, I think. Maybe it went to some film festivals, but I mentioned it to you the Sigourney Weaver Snow White movie. Yes. Where Sigourney Weaver plays the evil queen. And this one is not that crazy. It's not like they did anything that different from the Snow White story we know. She starts, she's not evil at first, actually. The little girl who was Snow White, I don't know, for some reason she bitched out and, like, you know. And, and so when Sigourney Weaver gets pregnant and she loses the baby, she, of course, blames Snow White and she wants to kill her. So that's that's basically, that was the twist. And then I think she ended up boning the Prince Charming character. Did she really? Or maybe not. No, maybe not. Maybe she, she definitely, like, seduced him into being on her side. Oh, Sam Neill was in this. Yeah, he was the king. Okay. They had an awkward, like, sex scene. Oh, our favorite screen girl was in it, too. Was she Snow White? Who? Monica Keena. No, she plays Lily Hoffman. So the son, uh, she, she or was, the yeah, daughter she was of... The Snow White. She was the Snow White character. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, there she <laughs> he goes. Favorite who? Stop. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was her. She played the adult version. And, uh, you know, I think she ended up hooking up with... The all the elves were not, or the dwarves weren't dwarves. They were just like some rough ass men living in the woods. But mm-hmm. yeah, so she hooked up with like the tallest guy. I don't know. So it was all right. I remember watching this when I was a kid, and I was like, "This is okay." Yeah, I watched this as a kid too. I, I always remember the cover of mm-hmm. it, of just that black background and just that shadowy sort of mm-hmm. look of her as an old woman. Which, by the way, the makeup makeup was great. Was so good in this movie, mm-hmm. and you know, it's Sigourney Weaver. Yeah, so, she, I mean, yeah, she, she did a good it job. It was well. just, it was okay. Yeah. Probably a better example mm-hmm. of a reimagining would be The Lost Boys. Yeah. Oh. Oh, well, yeah. 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 The Lost Boys. There you go. Peter Pan. Yes, that works. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they they followed that very slight basic storyline of Peter Pan and his lost boys and he's trying to find his Wendy you know well isn't job. Peter Pan usually viewed as like I like I always read these theories that Peter Pan was always the villain I think that there was something to like that effect like kind of holding her to her against her will or just like I heard one story where when the boys grew up to a certain age he would kill them Ooh. Yeah, because he didn't. He just didn't want anybody getting older or whatever, and so that's kind of mm-hmm. what happened. Then we go out and get more and mm-hmm. all that stuff. But. but yeah, I think this was a good twist, and obviously it's like your young forever, just like Peter Pan. Um, so I thought that was very creative. I think people might forget about that, even though it's called The Lost Boys. It's like, why is it called The Lost Boys? Oh, yeah. I think um, for a long time I probably remembered it sort of mimicked Peter Pan's mm-hmm. idea of immortality mm-hmm. and then it, it, Lost Boys is just a fantastic vampire movie so I just didn't think about it yeah, anymore that's <laughs> definitely people just think of it as a great 80's vampire movie Yeah, but it's based on something else basically or inspired by something else mm-hmm. so these are the things I like what did you come up with Rob? oh god come well on, now I on. didn't I, I mean so I have one or two titles, but it, it's hard for me to bring up because I don't remember them. I only watched them once when I was younger. Okay. But um, another fairy tale character, they did Rumpelstiltskin. Did you ever see that one? Oh, that direct video thing? Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. So they did okay, that one. Okay. That one was like... That was weird. They really tried to take themselves seriously more than leprechaun but still was very comedic like there was just no way we could take it seriously but they really tried to amp the horror in that one versus leprechaun where it was just you know he was saying a lot of funny one-liners and all that stuff but yeah Mm -hmm. it's a good reimagining too leprechaun yeah usually like nice little i mean they're mischievous but they're not fucking killing people yeah they just don't want you to steal their shit so you know what else? Now, I mean, I don't know if that classifies a, a reimagined sort of yeah, story. Yeah, it's reimagining. I mean, Rumple wasn't a good character. He wasn't, but, but they, he wasn't killing anybody. Okay. Yeah. He just like did tricks or something, or or like mm, deals. I mean, he or, taught her how to spin straw into yeah, gold. Yeah. To help her like get out of you know getting her head chopped off, but then he wanted her firstborn child. 
Oh, maybe that was it. Was that I'm trying so, to I mean, remember the the plot still, of this one. Like she want he still wanted her firstborn child. I don't remember what the deal was that was made. I think oh, and for some reason I think it was like a really basic ass thing where her her husband died, but then she was like, oh, "I want him back. I'm so sad." And I think somehow she made a deal that he would come back. And you know, they he comes back, they have a night of passion and then for some reason it I don't know if it was like Rumple Stiltskin disguised as him or something because mm-hmm. he totally boned her. So <laughs> rude. But when she goes to like get in the shower with him, it turns into Rumple Stiltskin, and then she's like, ah, running for her life, and he's killing everybody as she's trying to get away with her child. Yeah, so that's that's basically what this was, is that yeah, Rumple Stiltskin gets released and then um his goal is just to uh demand possession of the baby. That's basically it. Yeah, I don't know. It, and, uh, I yeah. mean I saw it once when I was younger. It wasn't fantastic. Yeah. But I just remember him having to deal with modern technology at the present time and just, like, dealing it. with that kind of stuff. But he was very laughable, very comedic, kind of a jester joker-like. He looked like a life-size troll from Cat's Eye. They kind of had oh, yeah, the same had the, look a little bit. Hat. He kind of did. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's not scary, though. No. <laughs> the only other one that I could think of was Pinocchio's Revenge, but then that, I don't know, to me, I really didn't count that. Um, there's Hansel and Gretel. Yeah. Do you remember that one with, um... With Gemma Arterton. Yeah, who was the bro? I forgot. Uh, Jeremy Hawkeye. Renner. Jeremy Renner, yes, yes. I found that to be entertaining, but to me it was just super, super cheesy. I mean, I get the whole concept, which is, you know, don't make these kids weak. They actually survive their tale, and make it their mission not to let it happen to anyone again. That's an amazing concept. I just don't... I think this reminds me a lot of uh, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Ah. Uh. That you just give them way too much firepower. Like, they they know karate. They know all of, like, anything in martial arts. They can do everything. Mm-hmm. And it's just... I don't know. To me, there's just no kind of suspense there. And I just love the aspect of them growing up having this responsibility. Like, it could have been a super good, supernatural sort of thing. You know, brother and sister, they have to deal with it, but they're not perfect. They just know that they have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And they just took it to this, like, action-y packed thing where it was just full of, like... Yeah. Yeah. It's not the horror that you're thinking of where it's suspenseful it Mm -hmm. was an action movie yeah I just I guess I just Mm -hmm. preferred it to be and you you just named another one Rob you keep saying I can't think of any but you (laughs) said Pride and Prejudice and Zombies yes that is that is sense and sensibility and sea monsters but I mean I'm just saying it's like I didn't want to bring these up because I had never seen them so it's just like why Yeah, yeah but still I mean these are things that it's like I mean who thought that you could turn Jane Austen into a zombie flick yeah um or the comic book that I keep mentioning, mm-hmm, the Harriet Tubman, Harriet Tubman yeah. Demon Slayer. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do. Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Slayer, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, Vampire Hunter. Vampire yeah. Hunter, my bad. So what do you think is the sort of like, I'm trying to think of the right word here, the the advantage or or n- not need, but just like what's, what's the thing that people like like making these types of movies it's fun yeah it's fun to write it i mean reading these books and watching these movies these comics it's just a fun idea in my opinion Mm -hmm. to take civil war era characters or elizabethan characters and put them in these scenarios with monsters and things trying to kill them whilst they're also, you know, trying to, like, speak prose to Juliet on the balcony or something. Yeah. They haven't done that yet. But mm-hmm. It's only a matter of time, I'm sure. Only a matter of time. Um, I won't really go for that one because I don't like Romeo and Juliet. It's not my thing. But I just think it's it's more inventive to me than straight up remaking Halloween or... A Nightmare on Elm Street. It's like, we've seen that. Okay. I mean, I don't think that there's really any room to, like, put... Um, well, I was about to say something. I was about to say there's no room to, like, put um, Freddy in, like, a Shakespearean situation. But 
that movie that's coming out, Ready Player One, features mm-hmm. Freddy and probably yeah. some other characters. So mm-hmm. that's really that's kind of fun. Yeah. I think we like seeing the merging of different universes. Okay. I think it's more creative. So you you do encourage these type of movies to Yes. Stuff. Can you or any of the movies that we just mentioned were, were they good? I mean, we don't really see too many of theatrical releases. Most of these titles we mentioned have gone straight to video. Mm. Are they made to be Most of B them. movies? Are but, they made to be, you know, cheesy and funny or something to poke at? I mean, and yeah, some of them have not been done well mm-hmm. or a lot of them. I liked um, Hansel and Gretel. Okay. I saw it. I mean, I saw it on Netflix. You know. Yeah. Basically, it's free. I went to the theater. After you pay the monthly thing. But I watched it, and I knew what I was in for. They're killing witches, and it's fun. And there was lots of makeup and maybe too many visual effects. But still, it was fun. Um, I liked the little twist at the end where she was a witch herself, and their mother was a witch. And, um, you know, it was it, it was what it was. But um, the straight-to-video ones, I can't really comment. They were yeah. not. Yeah. Um, Red Riding Hood. Do you have much memory of that? I wish I could remember that movie. Which, with Amanda Seyfried? Yeah. I didn't see it because it just didn't look great. I remember watching it. And and it was PG-13. I think the movie dragged on for... It just dragged. It just was Mm -hmm. not entertaining. And I think they tried to give us some twists at the end. And it just didn't pay off. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't impressed. But this was probably one of the biggest ones under this particular category that they released in theaters. And had it been successful, who knows what other ones we mm-hmm. would have gotten. Yeah, they do try every so often, just like uh, they did uh, the Grimm Brothers. Yeah. That wasn't Brothers great Grimm, yeah. either. Mm-hmm. And that yeah, was something that's like, they made it, and they're like, well, we don't know what to do with this shit. And it took a few years before it actually came out. And it was just okay. I mean, they, they featured a lot of different fairy tales, um, so it had a couple moments, I guess, but I remember it not being what we wanted it to be. Yeah. And I think even reading about these movies, it's like, oh my gosh, they're going to make this into a movie. I'm so excited. So same thing with The Wizard of Oz. It sounds so exciting and promising, and I pray that they don't yeah. go a similar route. Like, we don't need it to be PG-13. Come on, it's a horror movie. Yeah. We, I mean, like, look at The Lost Boys. Uh, granted, now the Lost Boys is sort of like a vampire story with Peter Pan just sort of like laid on top, you know, just a little bit. But that's that's a good idea, and these stories can be told. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't see the Sleeping Beauty thing on Netflix. Um, uh, I was almost there. I had my button on the on the OK. And I was like, I can't. But what I did do is watch the even, it was probably worse, was the little rotting dead hood. Um, Oh my God. This movie was horrible. But the star, the cast was like, well, maybe it's decent because they actually got people that I know. Really? In the movie. Romeo Miller. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. And um, Eric Belfer. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. And then. He looks like a wolf. I know, right? And hold on, let me look this up because there was one other person that I recognize. I just can't pinpoint him from where. Um, there we go. Little Dead Rotting Head. God, this story was just junk. Um, <laughs> uh, Patrick Muldoon. I'm going to show you a picture. I know the name. Oh, you okay? He's yeah, been on some stuff. I know the name, and he looks vaguely familiar. But yeah, Meryl's place is what he's... Oh, um, Starship Troopers! That's who he was. He was the pilot guy that Dennis Richards was oh, all over. Oh, right. He was the cheesiest, work, worst actor in this movie. Oh, it was no. so bad. Poor oh. poor Patrick. But, like, Heather Tom. So, I recognize her from Soap. She was on a soap opera, Young and the Restless. That's where I know her. Oh, she um, read... I don't recognize her. Don't recognize her. her, yeah. So I that's where I recognize her. But so I was like, okay, sure they had fun. This movie could be decent. No, the story was just bad. All the kills were horrible. But they were mostly wolf attacks. And this woman whose grandmother um I guess killed her granddaughter, buried her, and then killed herself because it was in her destiny to become this sort of wolf hunter. 
to these wolves that were obviously more than just your natural wolf you know they were hybrids or something and it was obviously her destiny to take care of them and so when the wolves started attacking and there was going to be this whole takeover that's when she rose from the grave and she became this like sort of half woman half demon chick and started hunting them down it, it was just really bad. But I was like, if I had to choose between the two, I chose the Red Riding Hood storyline and I just put that Sleeping Beauty one away. I was like, I couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. But, um, so I wanted to ask you, like, where do you see this concept going? Like, did you watch Grimm? Did you... On- yeah, I didn't finish the, sh- the series, but okay. I did watch it. What did you think I, of I liked that? it. Okay. So you think, like, it, it's still definitely possible for there to be be a good one do you think there is a market in it still for it yeah and i think you know grim is it wasn't super scary but it was more of a um, the fairy tale thing they definitely tackled and um you know it was just fun yeah it was interesting where they could you know take it you know Mm -hmm. and just mix them all up together you know we hear all these fairy tale stories but what it would be like if they were all in the same universe Mm -hmm. yeah which brings me to my next so this kind of touches into um graphic novel and video game um have you ever heard of fables no. Okay. I do want to start reading this series because it looks so interesting. Um, I wish I had some info as to like like who drew it and all this stuff. So Fables is a very adult content-like supernatural horrific graphic novel of all the fairy tales. So just think of Once Upon a Time was mm-hmm. Once Upon a Time and True Blood put together. Hmm. That's what fables is and it's usually the fairy tales and the disney characters and whatever so they actually took that story and created a um a story based um video game for you know all the consoles whatever so do you remember the walking dead how they made a video game out of that and it was story based you basically just kind of walk around and you make decisions you choose the fate of the you know your character right they did that with fables and they called this story uh, the Beast Within Us. Hmm. And it focused on the Wolfman. Oh. Or the Big Bad Wolf. I'm sorry, Wolfman. Oh, yeah. The Big Bad Wolf. Mm-hmm. And he was a detective who had to solve a murder of <laughs> a, um, a of a prostitute who died um, just mysteriously in this like hotel room or whatever. And investigating this murder led up to this huge conspiracy that involved all these other literary characters snow white was his partner in crime at this um police like sort of um organization that mm-hmm. kept all so the thing was is that the fairy tale world existed but they went into this portal into our world and blended in uh. so um, they had to take sort of this potion that was kind of like a glam and it made you look human. So they couldn't see your literary form if you were like a frog or a wolf or a beast or whatever. And you blend it in. That was your goal. And it was up to the big bad wolf to make sure that everybody fell in line and didn't reveal their true selves because the real world can't be exposed to the magic and whatever. Hmm. So you play the big bad wolf and you just investigate and you just learn about all these like characters Beauty and the Beast is in it who own like this rundown apartment building and like they have like this horrible abusive relationship. It's so crazy. But um the story is really, really good. The mystery is good. There's tons of twists. It ends very, very well and it's supposed to get a sequel. But that <laughs> I think is a really good example to what you were saying. Yeah. You should check that out. I like that. Check I out like Fables, that. yeah. So um, that's pretty much all that I could gather Mm -hmm. as far as, um, and yet all I could find was, you know, fairy tales. I couldn't find any movies that were just like from comedy to horror or something. I couldn't find any. uh, The most recent example would be The Shape of Water. That Ah, is inspired heavily by a creature from the Black Lagoon. You are right, yes. And you know, it's like, what if... The babe went off with the creature from the Black Lagoon. That was his main mm-hmm. goal for the movie. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, I mean, she was definitely more like pushing something with him. He wasn't like all over her. Yeah. But yes, 
that's an example. That's something that I was talking about. And I mean, okay. it's like, you know, we're rapidly approaching the hour. Yeah. But um, there, there's other things. Um, I'm trying to think of like a buddy comedy um, <laughs> example, which I mean, you know, they maybe with uh, the Grimm brothers, they tried to do that. I mean, yeah. that was more of a comedy period mm-hmm. with horror elements. But, you know, I think that there are definitely ways to do this where you can combine more than one thing. The Shape of Water, people are like, oh, it's a love story, it's a drama. But there's moments where it's very scary. Not necessarily because of the creature. Yeah. He's not scary, but there's people in the movie that are scary. Yeah, definitely. Um, that are, you know, do, do horrible things. Where well, there were stakes, for sure, mm-hmm. I thought. So, yeah, I agree. So, um, our perception of horror doesn't always have to be so limited to people being ripped to shreds and a monster jumping out from the side and it's like oh god there's elements of horror laced into all kinds of things um you know even though jordan peele himself kind of refrains from calling get out a horror movie um it's definitely a horror movie he said that he calls it a social thriller okay that's fair that's fair there's it's like this dirty thing where people are like oh it's not a horror movie i don't want to call it a horror film Mm -hmm. because people don't like horror films they're crap so Guillermo del Toro has stressed that The Shape of Water is also included in the horror genre. Okay. It definitely has those elements to it. So it's it's all about being open-minded. Yeah. And I think reimagining these stories opens your mind. I think that combining different stories is very creative and it doesn't limit you to just putting a knife in someone's hand and a mask on their face. Yeah. I have always thought of ways to do reimaginings with other titles, but not necessarily for the horror genre, but I've I've always thought about that, and it's interesting that you decided to do this uh, topic today because we are in this phase of remakes are the safe bet, and I think that if you don't have an original idea, taking a story and giving it that certain twist into a different genre or something i think can be a way to put your own ideas up instead of just remaking the same story over again Mm -hmm. i mean just look at all of the um re-edited cuts of trailers that are on youtube where they make comedies look like horror movies and i just think those are so funny but they're Uh, believable have you seen the sleepless in seattle trailer i have not but i did pass it my God. Is it really it's turns out to so, it's like a thriller? So she like she tell crazy. me okay. So she's the crazy yes, one. That's why I was like, like as long as she's the crazy one, and she's I'm kidnapped good. his son. That it, is, it's awesome. like oh my god, they did a really good job of this. It looks like it's legit a thriller. Yeah. So so I mean, but I mean, and that's just a fan out there who just mm-hmm. had an idea and wanted to have some fun. You know, the, remakes aren't the only answer out there for guaranteed money and i think this is a great way to establish a little bit more of a creativity when you reimagine something Mm -hmm. you know and i i give it i give points to sci-fi for trying it they do it all the time and they tried with um you know wizard of oz like i said last week with tin man Mm -hmm. and i I thought that was cool. I and mean, they did the same thing with Alice in Wonderland yeah. on sci-fi. That one, I yeah, think I Tin Man really... was better than the Alice thing. Yeah, but no, I agree. I agree. You know, you but, gotta try. But yeah, you did um, tell me to think of titles, though, that would be cool to reimagine. What What did you come up with? If you thought of any, did you think of any? Oh, I mean, you know, Rob, I tell you to do stuff and then I don't do it. (laughs) But I think that there's definitely, like, going back to the old original Universal Monsters, I think that's fun. Okay. Um, Obviously, we saw the, it was basically like a remake of The Invisible Man, Hollow Man. I don't know how successful that was. Yeah. But, you know, it's like they took The Invisible Man and they made it fucked up. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. shape of water took the creature from the black lagoon so i think you could take the original universal monsters i mean bride of frankenstein she never gets any love i know basically bride of chucky did that you know there oh well there you go oh yes yes that's right that's right that's a you know it's not a remake but it's like it's a nod to yeah the bride of frankenstein so definitely these things can be done 
Okay. Well, I actually did think of some titles. I mean, I didn't really come up with like a plot or anything, but for some reason, all I could think of was kid movies turned to horror movies. I don't know why my mind goes to that. Like what? So, Adventures in Babysitting. That, to me, was on the brink of being a suspenseful thriller in itself. It was an adventure movie. The way that they kind of depicted Chicago downtown just made it look terrifying. And some of those like scenes did seem a bit scary, but I think that if they were like really on the run from like some mobsters and they had to protect the kids and stuff mm-hmm. and she's like out on the damn roof the glass oh my down. god yeah That's scary. like it, they could easily turn that to a horror film mm-hmm. um i also i also would i would be okay with the goonies being a horror film and even like taking out some of them kids in, in the process like i just found it hilarious that they all ended up surviving eaten that by whole, that octopus that whole entire excursion like all of those traps and i'm like yeah when i really set this up just so seven people can go down there and solve his thing otherwise you're dead if you try and go in alone you need seven exactly and i'm just like mm, come on uh, it could be could but be a thing. i i wouldn't mind seeing that as a horror movie okay. um toy story is another one Oh, you mean like with the the toys that are like well just coming been... well not even just that particular oh. scene but just in general like you can you can make a horror film and just have these toys come to I mean technically demonic toys did it yeah. but at the same time do it right <laughs> <laughs> you know oh, okay but just kind of the idea that these toys are like around you and alive the whole time like in my mind I was thinking like Pete's Dragon and. What I had thought about with that one is that the existence of this dragon is only if this kid is alive. Mm -hmm. And so if anybody fucks with this kid, dragon's up there protecting him as his sort of like shadow or just guardian person, you know, and it gets very deadly. And so, yeah, that to me is a reimagining right there. (laughs) You just have... I, I had a thought of like a guardian angel. That's also what I thought Archangel was going to be about. Yeah, like Archangel, there was going to be like oh something like always watching and protecting. But then it was like it'd be some sort of fucked up part of the technology where it's like, oops, we have a glitch and things like kill whoever just upsets the child. <laughs> yeah, it's like you pushed her down. Kids hanging from the jungle gym or something. It's like oh god. But- they had a movie like that. Um, do you remember Monkey Shines? Oh my! Do you remember that? God. Yeah. Yeah. That was a crazy movie. Let's not talk about it. Yeah. It's so disturbing. We can't, we can't. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, well, I'm in a better mood now, at least. <laughs> well, that's good. The crocodile that's ruined what, me. That's what the show is for, is mm-hmm. to put you in a good mood. Oh, thanks. <laughs> that's all it's for. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I have a confession. Uh-huh. I don't have a bitch really, Rob. <laughs> that's quite all right. Excellent. I thought of one, but it's it's really horrible because oh gosh, let's just you know hear it because I yeah, don't have one at all. I know. Well, it it had to do with the episode of Crocodile that we watched, and hmm. I I don't know if it's an actual bitch. Really, is just this is when I was the most pissed off. Is the insurance woman like she claims she's seen it all, and. I'm sure this wasn't the first time she came across something very disturbing in someone's head. I don't understand why she couldn't keep her cool getting to the car. I just, I don't know if it was shock value or like maybe that was the most disturbing thing. Maybe it's human instinct. It's just, woman, it's your life. Right. Think, like, come on. Like, I was just really mad. And I know this needed to happen for the progression of the episode, but like, you couldn't play it cool. I mean, literally, she's like, okay, I'm done now. Goodbye. Blah, blah, blah. And she walks out and she's just giving out all these signs. And then, oh, of course, her car didn't start. What the deuce on that? Like, can we at least see that she's had car trouble in the past? Like, come well, the we fuck did. on. We did. Yeah, there was a moment where she was, like, trying to start her car. She had to push it, like, three oh, times. Oh, okay. Okay, well, that's so, forgiven. Yeah. But I'm just like, you could have played your cool. It, it just made me mad that she just couldn't do it. So, yeah. you know, bitch, really? Yeah. Clearly, she hadn't seen it all. Until yeah. then. I mean, but do you think that kind of behavior is is warranted to get the suspense flowing? I mean, isn't there a different way that 
You, I mean, maybe she could have played her cool and, and the woman didn't believe her anyway and still went after her. I just didn't like the fact that she had, like, that was the reason why she didn't believe her. You know, if she hadn't acted all hysterical, then she wouldn't have known yeah. any the wiser. And I'm just like, there are better ways to tell a story like yeah. that. And I just, I just don't like that type of thing anymore. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's all I have to say. <laughs> all right, so um, next week we're going to do Netflix and nominations. We're going to tell you about all the horror movies coming out in February. And I went ahead and did a little peek. We're going to be in for a good February, in my opinion. Okay. Um, just combining all from video to demand to theater, February is going to be a good month. So I'm excited to talk about that next week. Um, after We're not going to do it on the show, but yeah, we're going to pick our theme ah. and figure out what you want to do now we can already just do you know the whole lovey dovey holiday theme or we can just do a random theme that we we haven't done yet so okay. we'll figure it out and then come back and um thank you guys for listening make sure to go to itunes give us a five star rating leave a comment what you thought of our episode today and what you think of all of the show uh and yeah We'll catch you next time on Bitch I Ain't Scared. <laughs>